The PlayStation 2 contained some classic games, and it's a very memorable era in gaming. You might want to go back and play some of these from time to time, but you don't have the console anymore. A way you can do it is by emulation, and today we're going to look at a step-by-step -step guide for PCSX2, an emulator for the PlayStation 2. To begin with, you're going to need to go to pcsx2.net. When you're here, you'll be able to download either the latest stable or the latest nightly version of the emulator. You can also download previous versions if you want to. The latest nightly is the latest version of PCSX2, but the latest stable is the one that's been more thoroughly tested. By clicking on either of these releases, you'll be presented with a drop-down to download the application, which you can do for Windows, Linux or Mac. For this example, I'm going to choose the latest stable release and select the installer for Windows. If you click on the previous versions button, you'll be sent to a separate page where you can download all of the older versions of PCSX2. Once you've downloaded the version for your system, you can simply run the installer. When you get to this screen that asks you how you want to install, select Portable and then press Next. What this will do is keep everything in one folder named PCSX2. Then you can proceed through the installation as you normally would. Once you open up PCSX2 for the first time, you'll be greeted with this screen. And before we can get playing, you need to set up the application. To do this, go up to Settings and then Interface. I like to leave these initial settings as they are, but here is where you can change the language or the application's theme if you want to. It's also the place where you can check for updates. Next, go to the games list on the left hand side and then come across to Add. Find the PCSX2 main directory on your system. Click on the games folder and once you're here, come down to the bottom and press select folder. If for whatever reason you don't have a games folder, you'll need to create it. Right click, go to new folder and call it games. This will add it to the directory and then any games you put in the folder should appear in PCSX2. You can then enable scan recursively by either saying yes to the prompt or by ticking the box. At this point you're going to need a BIOS. I can't say where you get these from but I would recommend getting a few from different regions. However a quick Google search will help you. If a BIOS directory is not set then press browse find your PCSX2 main directory and look for the BIOS folder. Click into that folder and then go down and press select folder. Now you can simply drag any BIOS files you have into the BIOS folder. These BIOS files should then appear within the box in the program. If they don't but they are present in the directory just hit refresh list. In this section of the settings, I would also recommend ticking fast boot. What this will do is skip the PlayStation 2 startup screen and instead load straight into the title screens of your game. But of course, this is completely optional. The next tab down is emulation. I would keep this exactly as it is, but if you want to change the settings, that's completely up to you. You can change the speed of the emulation, frame rate and V-Sync. Moving on into the graphics settings, if you want PCSX2 to use a specific graphics card within your PC, you can select it by using the adapter drop down box. And then of course selecting which graphics card you want to use. If you've only got one graphics card connected to your PC, you can leave this as it is. Also here is where you can alter the resolution and aspect ratio. Keeping this on auto standard will display the games at the same aspect ratio of typical TVs of the time, but you can force games into widescreen by changing the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 and then also ticking this box to apply widescreen patches at the bottom of the graphics tab. The next tab along is the rendering tab and this is where you can change the resolution which you can upscale all the way to 12 times native. This would be 8K resolution. You can also go over to the post processing tab and if you come down into this filter section and the drop down next to TV shader, you can add a shader such as scan lines or a CRT TV filter. These shaders are completely optional. And of course, with these graphics settings, make sure you set them to something that your PC is capable of. 
The next thing we need to do is set up memory cards. With these, you can not only save your games, but you're able to swap out your saves if you want to. If that's something that you do want to do, I'll leave a link in the video description, a card and a pinned comment to another video that goes into a little bit more detail about swapping out saves. To activate the memory card slots, tick the boxes next to slot one and slot two. That's it, the slots are now active, but we now need virtual memory cards to put in them. So press on browse and then find the mem cards folder within the PCSX2 main directory. Go into the folder and then press select folder. Now we can create memory cards. Come down to the create button and give your memory card a name. You can also give it a default file size. However, most PlayStation 2 memory cards were eight megabyte. These are supported by all games. Once you've created your memory card, just press OK and the memory card will appear. At this point, just right click on the card and select use for slot one or use for slot two, depending on which slot you want to put the card in. It will then say it's unformatted, but it should format itself when you go to save a game. These memory cards are shared between all games, but if you want a separate memory card for every game you play, you'll have to create those manually and then keep swapping them out every time you swap games. Back in the PlayStation 2 days, it was also the early days of online gaming, and you can do this with PCSX2. In the network and HDD section, under Ethernet, tick the box that says Enabled. At this point, you're all ready to go and set up to play PlayStation 2 games online. You will need to create a PlayStation 2 online profile, and there'll be a separate video on this linked in all the usual places. However, do be aware that most of these games, while the servers are up, they're not very active. So that's it for the main bulk of settings. What we now need to do is set up a controller. To do that, go back into the main PCSX2 home screen. Then go to settings and select controllers. In the global settings, you can tick if you're using a DualShock or DualSense controller and you can also enable X input if you're using an Xbox controller. But just to let you know, I'm using an Xbox controller and I don't have X input enabled. In these global settings, you can also tick to add a multi-tap to control port one or two. Ticking one of these will add four controller slots and ticking them both will add eight. It doesn't matter how many controller slots you have, you'll still need to map each controller. To do that, click on one of the controllers on the left hand side. Now I'm just going to do controller one as an example. Set this in the drop down to say DualShock 2. This is the standard PlayStation 2 controller. You can change this to any of the other controllers listed, for example a guitar, if that's what you're using. When you get to this point, plug in the controller that you intend to use. Then go over to automatic mapping and click the button. This should map your controller. If it doesn't, and all of the boxes are still blank, you can do it manually by clicking on one of the boxes and then simply press the button on your controller that you want to map to. You'll have around five seconds to set the mapping, and if the time runs out, you can simply click on the box again to start the timer again. Now come over to the settings tab and double check you're happy with all of these settings. If you want to invert any of the analog sticks, you can do this here too, simply by making a selection from the drop downs. So that's now all of the basic setup complete and we can start loading in games and getting ready to play. These games can be downloaded or ripped from your own discs, but the best thing to do is keep organized. Go into your games folder within the PCSX2 main directory, have one folder under the game's name and all of the game files then contained within that folder. Go into PCSX2, go to settings and then scan for new games. This should populate the list of games and it'll show a blue tile and the game's title. At this point you can click on it and it will be entirely playable. If you want the game's covers to display, you can download them and I'll leave a link to where you can get them from in the video description. Simply go to that link and you'll be presented with two different links. One is for 2D covers and the other is for 3D covers. Copy the one you want and then go into PCSX2, go to Tools and then Cover Downloader. 
Paste your link of choice in the box and then press start. The more games you have populated within the application, the longer this is going to take. If for whatever reason the covers can't be found, you can manually assign them. To do this, do a quick Google search for the game's cover and save an image of it. Then go back into PCSX2, right click on the game and press set cover image. Find the file on your system and then confirm it. The game's cover should then change. And that's it, you're all set and ready to start playing PlayStation 2 games on your PC. If this guide was useful to you, leave a like, drop a comment if you've got any questions and feel free to share. Also stay tuned to the channel because there'll be more guides within PCSX2 coming very soon. And these will go into more detail of some specific elements of the application.